one of your recent videos, obviously with your raw veganism and beautiful spiritual advice videos, um, did raise a few eyebrows uh, in your community and and everywhere else. The, the urine therapy. Now, this has been dropping around um, every so often over the past five years. Uh, what is it, Owen, and what does it actually do? Because it will raise eyebrows appreciatively, wouldn't it? Yeah, Brad, urine therapy has been around for ever since time began, as far as I'm aware, and it's practiced by millions, if not billions, of people um, in history, or even today, should I say. Um, it's called Shivambu in India. And it's basically, in what I've learned, it is a homeopathic, nutritional, medicinal, and informational liquid that's full of all sorts of nutrients and healing compounds, as well as a tiny bit of waste, because every organ is multifunctional, including the kidneys. So um, in my life and some of my friends' lives that I've known personally, apart from people on the internet, we've had like incredible results. It's like... It's 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 excellent um, uh, for ongoing use um, for nourishing all of your hormonal system. It has all the hormones of all of your endocrine glands. Your potentially your pituitary. Your has melanin from your pineal, and usually melanin is very hard to get. It has has from your thymus, your your adrenals, your your sex glands, your gonads. Um, thyroid so anyone with any sort of like it's sort of like free hormone replacements to a degree mm -hmm. and my life i've found has really helped my just to generally have more energy it's also full of amino acids um it's it's um lots of vitamins and minerals and other nutrients it's also very cleansing so for me i call it like a yin yang liquid often herbs are classified as like either yin or yang like yin is restorative and replenishing, like a, like receptive, like a female, and yang is more like activating and energizing, like associated with the male energy. So for me, um, urine or orin, like it was originally called orin, like or like a gold kind, and um, like the Greek gold kind or aurora borealis, or the aura. It's either called orin or orin usually. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will be open to trying it. The only thing is, I mean, how do you find the, the taste? Is that, is that a problem for you? To be honest, I never have a problem with the taste except for when I used to take it. I never really had a problem with the taste, but what I'd recommend for anyone to do is, basically speaking, the worse you eat, the more of the, what you eat or like a bit bad will go into the, into the taste of the pea. So the best thing I've found is just simply be more hydrated is a simple one answer, I'd say. I agree. Like I'd recommend being more hydrated by simply having more water, having more tea or herbal tea, drinking more juice, or having more fruits. And generally, I suppose, eating less dehyd, super dry food like potato chips or crisps or like kind of cooked food where it's like really dry and sticky and just have more liquidy food or more water overall, for example, is very easy to handle. Um, you know, on that note about diets, I'd also like to mention, because not only do you give uh, dietary advice, you also give spirituality and life advice as well. Um, now, for a lot of people, um, the majority of people in the Western world, um, use alcohol as a way of changing their state of mind and using it as a form of release, which is obviously not the, the most positive way. How detrimental, Owen, from your experience, is alcohol to us as humans? Thanks for this good, interesting questions, Brad. And again, thanks for having me. You're so, very welcome. Um, about alcohol, I hear it's bad for your liver. It dries up your skin. And for me, spirituality is the most like inter like my most biggest passion in life because I used to be like physically sick. I used to be sad, depressed, lost, anxious, lonely, insecure. Like I used to have a lot of like really like serious like emotional issues for quite a long time. You know, so spirituality and healing is what got me out of that and for me like i'm very grateful for that so i'm the type of person where i'm not like an extremist i, I used to be an extremist but these days i'm more of a i look at things from different angles and i like to appreciate the holistic approach for example anything can be good and bad almost pretty much you know like they say a poison can be poisonous in, en in enough quantity but in a tiny therapeutic or even homeopathic like informational amount it can be good for you and it can like it can make your body understand the poison and become like more better immune system so for me alcohol can be 
grounding. It can bring you into the present moment. It can quieten your mind, uh, the monkey mind or the, the obsessive egoic mind, as some people call it. And yeah. it can bring you into the present moment, which is good. So it can give you a glimpse of the state that you're after in a more like permanent, more general, ongoing way. So that's why people like stuff like alcohol, apart from really letting go of their fears and inhibitions. So the thing is, what I want to say is we can work towards this state gradually in our life through self-reflection, being honest with ourselves, self-examination, like becoming aware of what drives us and what triggers us and what makes us react and do things in life and what makes us like avoid things in life. So when we face ourselves and be open to the truth, then we can be then we can actually face others and connect with others and be have a connection of truth and be truthful to them. But it's really all about ourselves first. So alcohol can be very destructive. We can do crazy things in alcohol. We can lash out emotions um, and we can do very reckless or dangerous things. But at the same time, um, it can potentially, even I'm not against it at all, but I'm, I'm only for the use of it in healthy or balanced more smaller um, amounts. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, personally, I'm going to be a bit self-indulgent now. You helped me get through uh, my third year of university. I've been watching your videos um, for a while. And the first one that I watched was the um, it was very popular, probably one of the most popular videos, um, was the Ultra Green Smoothie in which you mentioned Organite. So I went on um, to the Organite website in South Africa and I purchased myself um two organite pendants uh, from there and then uh, ultimately a third it's very different for a lot of our listeners uh, obviously i know my research but owen you're the expert could you ex explain how you find organite helps you in your life well thank you brad right now actually i have i have um two organites um, on my computer on my laptop like one is a pyramid shape uh it's small like hand sized and another one is just like a more squashed like type of sphere type of shape you know um, I find what Organite is, is it creates like positive energy or even better yet, it, it, it helps to transform and transmute negative energy, which could be like EMFs, you know, like um, electronic pollution. There's more than just like chemical or like physical pollution. There's also like electromagnetic pollution too. Um, so a lot of the today's ga gadgets and electronics and um, Wi-Fi's and telephone and mobile phone cables and transmissions create negative energy that's harmful and so does like very like negative like emotional energy or like people like you know going around lashing out on the world like and not dealing with their issues when people don't deal with their issues they become suppressed but the more sensitive you are as an empath or as just a general human being because we're all empathic and we can all tune in and feel other people's feelings so for me organite helps to both protect physically and generally like uh, mentally or emotionally also it also helps to raise the vibration so many people who are healers use put organite for example either or crystals and there's actually crystals in organite too so people use crystals or organite in like therapy rooms or like root places of like healing to promote more harmony and tranquility and while it's not like there's all these things in life, Brad, that I've found, like people like swear by urine therapy, mm -hmm. like people swear by um, organite, people swear by crystals, people swear by meditation, and there's a million things people swear by, like, you know, yeah. like raw veganism or anything, or barefoot walking, but some people, like I was saying earlier, like they go to the extreme, and I appreciate that because I used to be an extreme person. Actually, my motto when I was in my early 20s and teenager used to be actually be extreme. <laughs> yes. So I've, I've gone to the other side to be much more balanced now. And I found this is what brings health because <laughs> I wrecked my physical health by being extreme. But um, getting back to what people do is um, we love to try and find a savior or we idolize somebody like a guru or we find like someone to idolize and put above us. So we try and go to the extreme as if saying one thing will do everything or one diet or one thing fits everybody perfectly or organized is the, the way to save humanity. But in my experience, everything is a small little like incremental like percent on the whole spectrum of like a hundred or a thousand percent. So life is holistically managed. Like organized isn't going to like fix your your diabetes or your like your, 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 your heavy like health problem or it's not going to fix your relationships. Yeah. But if you do a whole lot of things combined, that's what I do, 
then you're you're going to get like more realistic, like grounded spirituality results. We have seen like airy fairy. We have seen um, in society uh, a shift, and of course, probably one of the most biggest um, uh, products out there in the new age is uh, Rhonda Burns' The Secret, um, thanks to great marketing. I know that's not a favourite amongst a lot of spiritualist uh, people. Um, this is a very interesting question, Owen, because I know you're familiar with the law of attraction, and it is um, if everything the law of attraction, the law of attraction for our listeners states that everything that's coming into your life, uh, you are attracting into your life. However, um, I know a lot of other people counter that and they don't say that it's everything that attracts. For instance, if somebody was in an area, say in the UK or where you're from an island, uh, that they don't like uh, and they are persistently uh, in this community, have they attracted that or, you know, do they just get, can they just get up and walk away? Yeah, well, Brad, I have to say... It's an amazing question. I love this topic deeply. I've spent a long time looking at the law of attraction and what even became, like, what was a prerequisite and what came before the, the secret was the whole law of attraction teachings by Esther, Esther Hicks and the, the channeled group of eight or ten non-physical beings in one that they call themselves Abraham. So they went deep into the law of attraction. So for me, Brad, you basically, are, I feel in my opinion, you answered the, quest, the uh, question in your question. Basically speaking, my belief is we are not the victims of our, like, we're not the victims ever, and we're not the pure, like, recipients of our 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 vibration, okay? I know um, some people will say we are, and maybe we are, okay, but what I'd like to add in is the very practical, grounded way that we can actually do things differently. So if we're stuck somewhere and we're not happy, we can just do what you said, and that's walk away, Brad. So what I want to add to this, this, um, discussion is the physical simple response that we can take so and that is taking an action so what i want to say is we all have a choice we're not stuck in anything Every, our whole life right now has been made up of our choices so the more conscious we become we can make more clearer and empowered effective choices to bring more happiness harmony peace and joy in our life and like i said it's an incremental like tiny <clears throat> step by step, one moment or one day at a time approach, even one week at a time. I found in life, we can't just like magically shift everything always in a day. <clears throat> you know, um, things are worked on like businesses or, or empires or whatever you want to call it are built one step at a time of careful attention and like hard work often, you know. So I, I actually, I am a business like owner and it, it does, it takes work, like it takes time to build up a good a business or a good relationship. You have to be attentive, you have to water your garden, you have to nurture it. Yeah. And when it comes to the law of attraction, I'd rather say that our higher self or our higher spirit gives us presents or gifts or things to help us to learn and grow from. So I believe in a higher power, whatever you want to call it. And instead of just saying we're purely down here on our own, like with the law of attraction, like running our lives, there's also the law of repulsion. Um, so it's not what we attract is also what we are failing to let in by what we're like repulsing, repulsing or like not letting in. So what stops us from letting in all the good stuff that we want is our blockages. So that's where, um, that means our false beliefs, our belief systems, our, our assumptions, our, our heavy attached, our attachments, our expectations, our traumas and wounds from the past, especially our outlook on life. So when we heal and let go of these blockages energetically, the blockages in our heart, the blockages in our mind, and the blockages in our, even our physical body, that's when we'll heal and we'll start to let in more things. So it's about allowing in the good things and then saying no to the things we don't want in our life. So it comes down to saying yes to what we want and what's good for us and saying no to what doesn't serve our highest good. That's the simplest, best way I could describe it. And that's how I describe how to practice self-love. Say yes to what's good and serves you and say no to what doesn't serve you and kick out and boot out what doesn't serve your highest good in a loving, compassionate, understanding way. Owen, uh, the team have spoken with uh, a Law of Attraction guru. Uh, we put the same question to them uh, and it says here, um, I'm going to um, paraphrase obviously for time, um, that basically if you're in an area that you dislike, that if you try and love it enough and can do that, then all of a sudden you will just, well, I don't want to use the word magically, it doesn't say that here, but what you want and the community you want will almost be there. Do you call bullshit to that? 
Um, I believe there's. I wouldn't call bullshit to that. I think there's 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 an element of truth in almost everything, especially people who are well-meaning and trying to do good. So what I what what I'll add or what what I'd like to try and say to that um, is, I do believe in like magic. I believe in like divine order, divine perfection, and I believe in higher powers at work. I believe in the spiritual world, and I believe in like the third dimension and loads of other different dimensions or frequencies. Okay, so magic happens so when we shift our vibration and when we see things differently when we believe it's possible and when we take action so the final the final grounded physical part is taking action also um then things can seem to magically happen so what what happens in in my experience brad is we change our heart we get some healing we change our perception we have a different open more open belief okay then what happens is the universe or our higher self will now be able to give us more things that we've either prayed or asked for or we're more open and receptive to that we really want in our heart. And then we'll see the opportunity because we're, we're waiting or we're there and ready for it, we're open for it. And then we'll we'll jump on it with our, and grab it with our two hands. For example, I met a good friend lately and the two of us had been like praying or like like said, sending the message out to the universe that we'd like to like meet a friend similar to us that we can find, like bring us happiness and friendship in life. So one day we just suddenly met in the supermarket of all places and we were, we were meeting on the same aisle and we just like started talking, we clicked and we became good friends. So so basically what that guru was saying, it's the answer would be yes, like things can seem to magically just change. But I want to just add in clearly for all the viewers is you absolutely need to take action. There's, there's many like, um, there's many teachings like and Indian stories like, where, like you can't win the lotto and praying to God all the time. I've been a good person all of my life. God, like, I want to win the lotto. I, I'll, I, I'll use the money good, and I've helped people all my life. But then he never wins the lotto, and he's wondering why. And then, then, then God or somebody one time says, well, get off your ass and buy a lotto ticket. <laughs> so it, yeah. it, ma- it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Owen, uh, personally, uh, of course, let's talk about you and your life now. Um, you, you're you from, is it County Wicklow in Ireland, um, from my research? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. County Wicklow beside the ocean in Ireland. And it's fair to say that you've done a fair bit of travelling of late, haven't you? And what? W- tell us where you've been, um, obviously the different places and communities, what you've learned, <laughs> and what made you want to up and leave Ireland? Because you seem quite happy there. And a lot of your YouTube videos that you've seen with your friends and stuff and you're doing your bike rides too. Uh, one particular video I enjoyed was the strawberry farm in the summer. It looked great. I wish I was there with oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting subject. For many years, Brad, like I've changed a lot in the last two years, you know. I used to be much more like naturally immature, um, less mature, more immature, less experienced. And a few years ago, I was much more focused on like um, the, um, raw foodism because I was still trying to desperately reclaw my 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 good health back. Like I went through a, a crazy life tra- changing health loss. I went from being super powerful, like one arm press up, one one legged squats, easy all day long running, to being like pretty much like very very limited, like like very very limited, pretty much like crippled and disabled in many ways. To be honest, so if, a little while ago I was really focused on. Um, I thought like vegan, raw foodism would be my way to get better. So I was much more interested in listening to like videos about like raw food and like detoxification and healing. And I was inter- interested in fruits and good weather. So what what initially I used to not like Ireland many years ago because I thought the weather and the fruit situation was crap. So I went to exploring the world, Brad, which was an interesting experience. I went to Bali. Um, I went with my ex partner. We went to Malaysia. We went to Thailand. And we came back to Ireland. Then we went to the countryside in the Ireland from the city in Ireland. And we lived in the suburbs in Ireland. Then we went to the Caribbean, which where she was from. Um, she's a friend now. Then we came back to Ireland. And then we decided to become friends. And then more recently, um, a year ago, I, I connected with someone in the internet. And I we went to La Palma in the Canary Islands. And then we, then we eventually, like, between visiting Ireland in between, we also went down to Canada and to Thailand and then back to Canada. And now I'm in Canada. Owen, with that lifestyle, um, do you find that money and also in life um, plays a hindrance to, I mean, I know a lot of people in my personal life, uh, I'm in my twenties who would love to just up and leave like that. Um, 
is money a big issue? Because I know it is for a lot of other people. And if so, how did you how did you deal with that personally? Hey, Brad, thanks for that question. Um, money is definitely an issue, like, for sure. Like, we, live, we have to live in the real world, too. And while I'm not advocating living purely for money, I advocate make money by doing what you like or love to do a lot and what brings you satisfaction or fulfillment for serving the community or the, the the global or the local community so do something that's like worthwhile and like truly in your heart you know and with money money is like almost like a game like i view life as almost like the matrix or like a game within the a game you know and money and everything in life is like a game in the game it's almost like a computer game but it's like the computer game of the soul or the some people call it maya illusion or else the matrix so Correct. for me money is just another little like level or another little aspect we have to like to, to crack or to learn about and yeah it's definitely a thing like we can be creative we can do we can we can do like um swapping of talents or time or we can do like house sitting another really good way to travel the world is house sitting which i didn't personally do but you can like do you can mind people's houses or like pets when they're away or you can just simply try and like make money like in various different like creative ways. So usually people think inside the box, Brad. We're very limited by the way we've been up, like grown, upgrown, um, in society. So we're very linear, like non-creative way of like doing things. So that if we become creative and try and look for various different ways or avenues of making making money. There's a um, lot of philosophers who say to, um, if you want to reach the journey of ascension, is to try and get your energy. Uh, away from the mind, in al almost closing down parts of uh, the, the uh, living from the mind and bringing it to the heart. Is that a feasible argument? And can people do that, living from this, this idea of we're all one, um, when you will have, uh, throughout your times, um, negative experiences, bad people who want to do you an injustice? Is that a feasible argument in society, Owen? Um, yeah, what I find, Brad, is some people use spirituality but they don't actually it's like some sort of like weird cloudy like um excuse or like barrier to actually like grounding the spirituality and the physicality together so for me mastery or like highest guruship whatever funny word you want to call it is is basically combining and using all seven major chakras masterfully and harmoniously and skillfully together for example some people are just totally stuck in the physical world they're unconscious they're living for basically like survival like and physical pleasure they're they're on sex drugs food money and they're all about like physical looks like how they look physically like being all like beautiful looking and like flirtatious and trying to be all like important etc yeah then there's the people who are like all like maybe the hippies or the real spiritual people in the spiritual communities they're all about like love and light and like oneness but then, you know, some of them spend all the time on the computer and they don't do anything really in the physical world. I was a little bit like that to a degree, but not, not exactly. Um, so for me, we want to combine our upper chakras, which are associated with like the third eye and the crown chakra, inspiration, like oneness, our heart chakra, love, understanding, higher understanding, etc. with stuff like our bodies, our adrenal glands, our sexual glands, our root chakra, sensual chakra, sacral chakra, um, so we want to do it all together. So that means if you make money, do with your with the upper chakras with love, care, compassion, understanding, and for a higher purpose and higher meaning to mean well for others, not just selfishly make money for you and your. So you want to make money for you and your little tribe or your family, but also you want to do good to the world from your heart. Uh, there are there is a lot of um, speculation online, and which is the most place that we know here in radio. Um, that people are consuming not only TV content but radio content. Everything seems to be going online, including uh, the one that everybody can use. That's uh, YouTube. And there's a lot of videos on there. Um, uh, well, you know, uh, a lot of videos um, on anything that you want to get. Um, but in particular, the, the conspiracy videos, um, and there's some big names from America and here in the UK um, that, that lead with these topics. And I know that you've mentioned um, before about these ideas. Now, what I couldn't understand, and I'll put this argument across to you, is a lot of people believe that the NHS here in the UK and health services worldwide owned by the corporations do not have humans' best interests for health at heart. Yet the uh, the government here in the UK uh, uh, have been for many years now um, funding the Stop Smoking campaign. The NHS is spending absolutely millions a year on this. Is that not helping people? <laughs> 
uh, it's a very funny world we live in, Brad. And yeah. um, I really appreciate you ask, asking all these questions. And all I can give, I wanted to say, is I can only give my perspective. And I'm 35 years in the body, and I don't pretend to know everything, but I do appreciate you having me on the show, and I'll just share what I know or have experienced so far in my life. So, the, in my opinion, what's happening is it's complicated. Like, the world has basically been run for thousands of years by what's called the cabal or the Illuminati or the bankers or the New World Order. And they're, in what I've come to, to feel or believe is undoubtedly this is what this is the case um, they are very very good at what they do they have a lot of experience at different ages also in our history of knowing how to basically run the world they think they own the world and they've created rules and laws and systems such as modern such as the typical school system the prison system the medical system and um, a lot I suppose they're the three main systems and um, the pharmaceutical and um, they're basically and they've created all the laws basically speaking like we're basically in many ways like in a huge well I don't really want to say it, but in a way we're a little bit like in a, in a bit of like prison almost like and each room is like each country like we have all these we can't just really run, go, go around the world like we want we have to go we have we have to pass all of their like get consensus and agreement by them and um like to leave country, sometimes you're not granted permission, or you have to like get all these like rules and stuff to, to pass by. But the yeah the N NHS, so we can heal our bodies. Our bodies are like incredibly amazing. Like trillions of trillions of functions all happening at the same time. Thousands or if not millions of parts in a cell. Hundred trillion cells in the body. So we've been led to think that we need all these drugs and stuff to heal and in drugs never make us heal they only cover up symptoms and create more symptoms by weakening or imbalancing another part of the body so that's why usually to get on one like pharmaceutical drug soon enough you need two soon enough you need three or four and then you're just getting sicker and sicker and what i found is through eating simply and lightly or even going back to doing juicing um and taking stuff like herbs or to support us or urine therapy to help us or like black powders and like cleansing herbs because what I've learned is the human body is like full of blockage and toxicity and rubbish from the from all the things that are in our food and air um, and our environment, which has been introduced in the last 50 years especially. So the human race has been shown statistically and observationally to be getting sicker and sicker at a weaker, at an earlier and earlier age. And things like cancer and heart attacks have like skyrocketed. So it's all got to do with like pollution and rubbish and toxicity. So in my life, I've been sick for 10 years, and in the last, since I've been focusing on detoxifying seriously, I've been making amazing, the best like health improvements and feeling strong and back more back to normal than ever. So all I want to say is the human body can heal, and we need to look outside the box and do our own research on the internet or talk to holistic people, and that there's hope, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope. So never feel like lose hope, and we can get better from almost anything. I think it's quite an acceptable and conceivable concept about uh, the elite and the establishment and uh, f uh, families at the top uh, who own these yeah. corporations and these huge networks. That That is now a conceivable idea for a lot of people. Now, if that is the case, Owen, and they, they want this global uh, agenda and they want ownership of the world, I just personally, as you say, from your perspective, from my perspective, if I was in that position... Personally, I don't know what under ob, under uh, what obligation I'd be for this, but I just think two fingers to that. I want to enjoy my life because I know I'm going to die, and if I'm doing bad for people and for the world, why would anyone, even those people at the top, why would they do that? Do you have any idea? Hey, Brad, thanks a million for your question. I love your question and I love your energy. So, that, just to give you my response on that question. Basically speaking, the people who are called the elite, etc., there, there's lots of them. There's many families, as far as I know, and there's lots of different individuals in the families. Some of them want to continue their stranglehold on the world, like pillaging and raping the, like the the, the earth and exploiting it and polluting it. Um, and for example, like the elite knew 100 years ago that we could use electric cars, but because they're they're totally controlling also the like the oil and gas and all that stuff. The, coal industries so the fossil fuels so they just want to make money and control the people like keep them like subordinate and so um the reason why they're doing that to answer your question brad is 
some of them are like very like psychopaths. They they don't have like proper empathic or feelings for other human beings. So they're more like disconnected from the heart. And I have compassion. Like I've no. I went through a little phase of feeling a little bit of like anger, but not for too long because like when I heard like we're in a prison or in a jail, like I felt a bit like a, a contraction in my body. Like, well, no, like but this feels bad. Like I'm in a, like, a, like almost like a slave. But at the end of the day, Brad, like I know others who got like upset or like in life for years. Like I don't want anyone to feel upset by what I'm saying. Don't feel bad at all. Just, just heal, to heal and learn and grow and be open-minded would be my message. Okay. It's a, it's a very interesting concept because obviously the reason I put it to you, um, we as human beings, yeah. with I know you've got a lot of empathy and compassion. It comes across in all your content online and also in your books, which we'll mention in a sec. Because you write in such a beautiful way, it's it's not grammatically correct. Sometimes you will put emoticons <laughs> in there, and it just reads so nice because it feels like you're you are literally your voice is in my head when i'm reading uh, your books and i did read um the first one i've not read the latest uh, i read the first with a lot of interest and it really was a lovely piece of work uh thanks brad that's like beautiful to hear i'm glad i took a lot of effort to make that book like a lot of work but a lot of inspiration of course and i'm glad that it's helped um you and i'm glad you enjoyed it and I'm, I'm really glad that you said i also helped your third year in college or university also you did you did and uh, I, I, as i say I, I was always i always check back even now for latest videos so what's next for owen fox then are you happy in canada now i know you told me just before recording this interview that uh, you've had one of the snowiest winters in years was it yeah absolutely it was like uh, it was pretty cold like i've never had anything like this before it was like up to minus 18 degrees at night time or minus five minus ten in the day or more um so yeah, I'm gonna go. Me and my partner Izumi, we're gonna be staying in Canada for a while at least. We may be staying here for longer. We may be visiting or going back to Ireland or La Palma sometime in the future. But right now, it's probably Canada for the moment. We're visiting Ireland and potentially La Palma and Canary Islands. I know it's beautiful life in the Canary Islands. I used to present from the UK on a syndicate um, show that went out over many stations, including in the Canary Islands. And unfortunately, I didn't have my studio on the beach, which I visioned when they propositioned this program. <laughs> and that was oh, okay. that was um, uh, a couple of years ago now. Uh, so, uh, do we, can we expect another book from you? You know what? Funnily enough, you asked because in the last month I've been compiling some information that, I, that I've written. Um, and I'm thinking of making another another book. My main focus right now is probably like video content, like YouTube, and I'd like to collaborate with other people, like be, like beautiful people like yourself, Brad. Thank you very um, much. I really really enjoyed talking with you. I really appreciate your work. But for the future, I will also include a book. Um, yeah, I'd love to just help people and like what you're what you're doing, and that's all we can do to help ourselves and help the world, just little by little, and. Just to be humble, like, uh, for me, I just like to be a simple person, like a simpleton, like a humble person. Like, for me, my role models are potentially somebody or anybody like Forrest Gump, potentially people with potentially, like, Asperger syndrome or autism or people who are, like, just super, super, super simple. They don't have a big, heavy energy, a big, heavy ego. They're not offended easily. They're often, like, laughing or joking or into maybe computer games or, like, science fiction or, like, make-believe and um, names a lot. For me, what I find is these people, like my brother, for example, he's such a such a good good energy. But um, like Forrest Gump, they're not they're attached to outcomes. They they go with the flow of what happens in life. They refresh in the moment. They don't have to defend their opinions or be right. They don't have to argue to be right with you. If you have a different opinion, they like they'll say okay. They don't have to like spend hours arguing or trying to force you to be wrong. And. The, the, the young children of Forrest Gump can play. They're not afraid of what people are looking at them. They're not always looking over their shoulder to see if people agree with them or approve of them or like them. So if we can free ourselves of being liked, disliked, approved, agreed with, someone having a different opinion or a different belief system, and we can let go of our fears and let go of our heaviness and our attachments to particular outcomes and be more open to what can come in life, be it a good thing or something we don't want, then we embody the energy of the clown or the holy fool, the sacred simpleton. And we can lighten up a little bit, Brad. Like, so much spirituality is so heavy and serious. Like, I want to be more, like, lighthearted and joke around and have fun and play and be connected with our inner child again. 
like for me there's far too much seriousness in like life like we talked about the Illuminati or the bankers and all this stuff but for me like I don't even like worry about them like I'm focused on raising my own that sounds serious raising my own consciousness but we, I'm serious and I'm not serious we can just embody lightness heal our shit so to speak but I mean that in a nice way and that's all we got to do like have some fun be out of nature move our body play a little bit be kind let go of our blockages and when everyone does this we'll naturally create new institutions and stop supporting the institutions that support the bankers that's all we've got to do Brad it's a grassroots gradual everyone raises their conscience together little by little there's no other way we can get them out we have to basically create new systems and stop supporting them that's right and, and love I think is the, the key the key answer and fuel in all of that uh, unity and love I think yeah love them too like I totally have comp- I feel sorry or have compassion for the bankers to be honest like because they're obviously not connected to power to be trying to be so mean to people like they even said they want to depopulate the population for billions the World Health Organization like I'd never want to like depo- kill a billion people so like for some of them to want to say that like I just feel sad for them like I, I hope I feel sorry for them like so I'm, I just want to like feel every human being Brad they want to have more peace and happiness and they want to get away from suffering so that's if you're not psychopathic like but generally speaking that's what we all want and that's all i want to try and help people to do as well like just simple as that like simple simple way of talking and a a sophisticated way of saying is connect to your higher consciousness or your higher self that's a more sophisticated way of saying it but you know we can say it both ways that's right and this message will reach uh, a lot of people owen uh you have a youtube channel um uh youtube.com forward slash owen fox and uh, your website also for our listeners uh owenfox.org um, and also your books, uh, the first, which I've read, brilliant, uh, Golden Messages of Abundant Joy and Celebration, and the latest, uh, Emotional Mastery, and they can all be purchased via your website, along with your herbs and superfoods. Yeah, man, that's that's correct. So they're my two websites, and I also have a third website, which is called HigherSelfHerbs.com, which is my herb website, herbs and superfoods, enzymes and essential oils. It's the HigherSelfHerbs.com. And I do one-to-one coaching. I love, I, like, I love deeply to connect with people like you, Brad, just to collaborate. You know, I never really got to answer the question earlier about like what happened when I travelled and what happened when I travelled, Brad, all the, over the world. I discovered how amazing Ireland was. And I love Ireland now. I love it to pieces. I love it. Like, from, my priorities have changed from fruits and weather to friends, family, and human relations, like human connections. So. That's what I love these days, Brad. And um, I love to work with people. I love to connect with you. And yeah, that's what's important to me these these days. And just doing like proper work that I find meaningful and I find inspired or exciting. It's lovely that you are in that position. I hope that people um, have been um, able to uh, grasp uh, a lot of your um, uh, your energy in the answers that you gave today and um, honestly personally for me it's an absolutely it's an absolute pleasure to interview you Owen because um, as I say I've been following your work for years and it really is an absolute pleasure so thank you very much for coming on the program